2020 has changed the nature of financial planning almost beyond recognition. Who would have thought that at the start of this year that we could stop meeting face to face with our clients and instead deliver our advice via Zoom and video conferencing? One of the tools we use within our business is called Dynamic Planner. It comes from a company called Distribution Technology. And Dynamic Planner is software to help us understand the level of risks our clients are prepared to tolerate within their portfolios. And Distribution Technology and their investment committee is a big contributor to the way we construct our investment portfolios. Dynamic Planner's CEO, Ben Goss, has written a fantastic blog post setting out what he believes the next 12 months have in store for the financial planning profession. So in this video, I'm looking at Ben's predictions and what they might mean for your relationship with a financial planner in 2021 and beyond. Hi everyone, I'm Martin Bamford, a chartered financial planner at Inform Choice. On this channel, I talk about personal finance, investing and happiness. I make these videos to help you become wealthier and happier. If that sounds like a great result, click on that little red subscribe button to become part of our subscriber community. It's completely free and you'll never miss an episode. Ben starts by saying, nobody could have predicted the impacts of COVID at the beginning of 2020 and the effect it has had and is still having on just about every area of society. Advisors have demonstrated tremendous adaptability in their working practices and have continued to deliver fantastic services to their clients during this period of huge uncertainty. That flexibility and determination will be required once again as we adjust to a post-pandemic world. His first prediction is that remote advice becomes the norm. When COVID kicked off back in March, we closed the doors to our offices in Cranley and Petersfield. Our team started working remotely from home and we started to deliver financial advice remotely too, usually via Zoom video calls. Ben explains in his blog that COVID has had a transformative effect on the way advice is delivered. After some initial teething problems, many advisors have experienced a productivity dividend, I love that term, as video conferencing and screen sharing has replaced face-to-face -face meetings and time spent on the road. He also says that many clients, and most notably many older clients, have embraced this new way of communicating. That's something we've certainly experienced in Informed Choice. At some point in 2021, there may be internal clamour to return to face-to-face -face meetings. Firms should resist this, according to Ben, and focus instead on reaping the benefits of remote advice. I agree with this entirely. I know some financial planners are desperate to get back to face-to-face -face meetings, but working remotely is just so much more efficient. Something I'm passionate about is that financial planners should lead the life that we want to inspire our clients to leave, to serve as an inspiration for what's possible. It's not particularly good leadership if the life that we demonstrate, the life we lead, is based around commuting, driving long distances between meetings, and working in an inefficient manner. Zoom should be here to stay. Ben's prediction number two is that personalization is key to client engagement. He says that consumers have had to find a lot of their entertainment virtually in 2020 as pubs, cinemas, shops and sports facilities all closed. As such, more and more are experiencing the personalization that technology can deliver, whether that is individual recommendations on Netflix, you know, customers like you notifications on Amazon, or targeted online exercise classes via Zoom or Peloton. Clearly, the financial planning profession needs to embrace personalization too. Technology will allow us to deliver what Ben calls mass personalization, so personalization at scale. That will drive greater personal interaction and engagement. My view of emerging technology is it should be able to do much of the heavy lifting in our jobs, allowing us to focus our time and expertise on the really valuable parts of what we do. AI and tech won't necessarily kill off the financial planner, but it will likely do a much better job at some parts of our role and do it faster and cheaper than a human financial planner can do it too. And that will free up our time. It will free up time to dig deeper into client goals and realise their financial planning objectives. Prediction number three, from Ben is an increased focus on value for money. Ben explains that the Financial Conduct Authority's attention may have been focused elsewhere in 2020, that's a bit of an understatement, but we can expect the regulator to return to the topic of value for money next year and for their gaze to fall firmly, squarely on advisors. He says already there have been mutterings about whether it is fair that all clients in a firm pay the same percentage fees and receive the same level of ongoing service. 
service. As I explained in a recent video, financial planners add a huge amount of value to our clients. Uh, calculated by Vanguard in their advisor alpha study is around 3% a year added to net investment returns. But many financial planners are quite frankly lousy at articulating this value. We need to do a much better job at selling the benefits of working with a financial planner. Otherwise, the regulator and assorted media commentators will continue to chip away at consumer confidence. They will focus on price at the expense of value. Ben suggests that upgrading the annual review process will be a start, perhaps by making it more efficient and effective to move into a series of smaller, more regular interactions based around effective risk-based cash flow planning that increases client engagement and adds up to greater value overall. We can have, of course, smaller, more regular interactions with clients if we hold on to Zoom meetings as the preferred method. And that stuff all ties together, doesn't it? Zoom plus this efficiency and value for money. Prediction number four from Ben, suitability moves front and center. Ben says the pandemic has forced many people to reassess not just their finances, but also their priorities, their life choices, even their mortality and the legacy they wish to leave. There is now a far greater understanding of how investment markets can influence genuine societal change and consumers will expect the wealth management industry to play a much bigger part in creating a more sustainable, even a more equitable world. Isn't that true? One of my great realizations back in March was how much I enjoyed living a more sustainable lifestyle. Now, I've always been a bit green, but 2020 for me was the year that I truly embraced sustainability. I switched in the summer to drive in an electric vehicle, using my legs more than my car for much of this year, and also upgrading some elements of our home for a more sustainable future. Ben says that advisors will need the skills and the tools to not only capture a client's individual ESG, that's ethical, social, and corporate governance preferences as part of their suitability requirements, but also tailor investment portfolios based on those preferences. Perhaps most importantly, they will need to monitor and report accurately on an ongoing basis to assure their client that specific choices are being properly managed. And leading on from that prediction, prediction number five is that ESG becomes a fundamental factor in risk analysis. Ben says consumers now expect and demand businesses and organizations to operate by ESG principles, but this will lead to a number of transition risks. An example is the recent UK government decision to bring forward the ban on new petrol and diesel car sales, bringing that forward to 2030. Within Informed Choice, we've already been looking closely at ESG from a risk analysis perspective. In fact, I've had a conference call added to my calendar this morning, thank you Philip Wise, to look at a new ESG analysis tool. So more on this to come because it is a huge and a growing investment theme. And then last but not least, prediction number six, Brexit firmly back on investors' minds. Ben explains that Brexit took a back seat in 2020 for entirely understandable reasons. We've all been a little distracted, haven't we, by this thing called COVID. But in the background, progress has been fraught in finalising a trade deal between the EU and the UK as we leave the European Union in our transition period on the 31st of December. It is doubtful that all of the issues we have will be fully resolved by then. We should therefore expect a great deal of uncertainty at least in the early part of 2021 with the potential for currency shift and associated short-term impact. Now something I've pointed out in previous videos is that it's going to be almost impossible to untangle the economic impacts of COVID from the short-term economic impacts of a no-deal Brexit. I am still reasonably optimistic that a no-deal Brexit will result in a fairly short-term hit to the UK economy um, and it should set the stage for a stronger medium to long-term recovery on our own terms. But I know Brexit talk can be divisive and despite my own political opinions around this, from an investment perspective, it seems that global diversification is going to be key. So there you go, six predictions from Ben Goss at Dynamic Planner about the shape of the financial planning profession in 2021 and indeed beyond. What do you think? How has your relationship with your financial planner changed this year? And how do you think it will continue to change in the future? Let me know in the comments. I'll pop a link to Ben's blog post with these predictions in detail in the description so you can have a read if you like. Until next time, thank you for watching this video. I'm Martin Bamford and remember when it comes to your money, the more you know, the faster it can grow.